This tombstone is called Swamp Voodoo, a voodoo-themed sugar skull kind of thing, and it was made for my secret reapy sake girl over Halloween forum. This is a new challenge because I got a great new aging technique, and that's peeling paint. This is a painted stone, which is new for me, modeled off of the New Orleans-style stone. And that snake is made out of great stuff. The single biggest challenge I've ever done for a stone. Whew. Thanks, Saki. Anyway, to make a graduated base, you want to have a staggered amount of bases, and then you shave it back down, and it makes it easier to make a smooth transition. Be sure that you sand the stone smooth, including the sides. Well, most skulls are hollow inside, so you have to fill up that space. So you're using great stuff. Uh, wet the stone, it helps it cure, and add in uh, layer by layer the great stuff, see how it's expanding, and then add in a little bit more, and then babysit it. It's going to take a while for that stuff to ooze back out, so every so often scrape off the excess. I don't know, it took about a half hour for it to finally stop oozing. After it's done curing, carve the, the skull so it has a nice tight fit into that stone because we're going to be great stuffing that in place. And a little bit more to fill in any gaps and use popsicle sticks to take off the excess. You don't want it gloppy, so leave it nice and neat. You want it to look like that knife is holding the skull in place. For the snake, one thing you discover quick is that rubber snakes aren't meant to be changed other than the way they were formed. So I had to sacrifice this guy, but at least he was a good model. Here's the scariest part ever. Great stuffing a finished stone. It is so messy and terrifying. The whole time I'm like, I need a drink, I need a drink. <laughs> anyway, do one layer and then go back and do a second layer next to it because you want to add some bulk for the meat of that snake and taper it off near the end. You don't have to do the second layer near the tail, but then put one more at the top of those two lines. Add some water to help it cure. Flip it upside down because gravity is starting to pull that down. You don't want that to happen. So as it cures, stand there. No, I'm kidding. Find a place to hang it up and then let it dry or cure. Well, at least I was able to use a little bit of the snake. Uh, cut the snake heads, take the stuffing out, fill it up with great stuff. This sounded easy. It turned into a mess. I don't know what happened. I probably didn't have the can tilted correctly, but ended up having to shove the great stuff in there. I got all over the snake. But either way, it worked out in the end. But you have to, as it cures, hold that snake head in place in the position. And now we're sanding our snake. This tool was great for that. We're trying to make that great stuff look more like a snake. You can use all your tools in your arsenal to help achieve that. Had enough with the great stuff, so I used Gorilla Glue to grill the snake head in place. And then a little bit of foam board glue to help ease that transition in. Been a while since I had to use the Monster Mud. This is a thick recipe and uh, lay it on there with your glove tan. Get it as smooth as you can. Then wet a brush with water and continue to smooth that Monster Mud. And you can also use it for the edges of where the Monster Mud goes into the foam to loosen that up. While it's still wet, use a tool to carve in some snake scales. You may have to use a water mister to keep it a little bit moist. And work fast, it is drying. Come back with your Dremel. This is using a ball tip engraver and redefine those scales. Near the body of the, the head of this snake, you wanted a thicker, switch to another attachment to make those lines a little thinner near the tail. Okay, that peeling paint. First you have to make some areas where that paint would have peeled. You use an X-Acto knife for a little crack here. You could also chunk out some edges, make small ones, big ones, then dry lock it. And for those tiny scales, you had to pop out that dry lock or else it'll fill it in. And then also didn't want any brush strokes on the skull, trying to make it look like that was a real skull. So you have to pat that dry. 
Okay, the aging technique. This is art masking fluid. You can find it in the paint section at the artist's uh, Hobby Lobby and stuff. It's like latex, so you lay it on wherever you want the next layers of paint to peel off. After that dries, paint it with your paint. Did two coats of white here. Nice and thick, random brush strokes. You want it to look like some caretaker did this. After that dries, you can just peel this stuff right off. It is so cool. You can use it for all kinds of stuff. Props, walls, whatever. It's a wonderful aging technique. And this is why we carved that real skinny little line. Look at the cool little bloop of paint you get peeling off there. This is some fun stuff, and it doesn't take much. That bottle's gonna last a long time. The epitaph was kind of disappearing, so I'll come back in with some really light gray to help it pop a little bit more. Paint the skull back to the bone color. Glaze it to help those lines be better defined. You could sponge that off and see, voila. Popping in the little hits of the green and the raw sienna to keep the color going. And the tea staining and here's a big mistake I did should have peeled that paint after this and the dry brushing step but did it before and it ended up kind of resealing the the stupid peeling that I did Ugh! so anyway only one tea stain you need to do with this you saw the little water bottle I had that lightened it up a little bit remember this is a painted stone kind of freshly done so you don't want it going too crazy there's the dry brushing so again after this step, then peel your paint. Ugh. See, check it out, it resealed itself. Do not do this. <laughs> Alas, nut was all lost. I mean, it's still showing there. And you still have to do this. You have to darken up the dry lock to make it look like stone and a little bit of dry brushing. And here helped out my cause where it really resealed. A little uh, dark gray to help add that shadow. Now we're painting the sugar skull. Because you can't have a white sugar skull because it's a white stone, pick pastel, which hurt. It hurt a lot to use blue, but anyway. Trying to come up with a color scheme instead of repainting it a hundred times on the stone, try your crayons. Ended up liking the red orange with the lime green. Had to have white for the lime green because it, it would take tons of coats to have it even show. And then discovered how come sugar skulls are outlined in black. Without that black, the color just is flat on that skull. So outline all your designs. And this is 3D dimensional paint. This is metallic gold for the sewn lip effect. Was screwing around and found this old cheap necklace that you see at all the Halloween spirit stores and thought, you know what? The adornment looks pretty cool. I was thinking, my husband suggested this too, if you have this as a display, you put candles, incense, voodoo dolls at the base of this, along with like all this jewelry, it's gonna look pretty cool. Uh, this is reindeer moss, which is different than the sheet moss you usually use. Thought it looked more swampy. Here it is all done. Uh, I really like this painted stone look. I For those voodoo or New Orleans type of things. This is a good style to do. You also get a little bit of that colorfulness in there. I uh, really enjoyed this stone. So I hope you did too and hope you learned a few things. Take care everybody. Bye.